Good time for another little walk about here on the monastery. Take a look at early summer, the Celtic garden with the uh, columbines, Welsh poppies. And uh, there are clovers here as well for the Irish. That, uh, flags for irises growing and becoming beautiful time of the year. The Welsh poppies always make things sparkle and uh, give a lot of life. All over the monastery grounds they spread and we keep encouraging them to spread, bring color to shaded or even sometimes dark corners. The Japanese maple always adds a great deal of color. This rhododendron is especially spectacular right now. It's actually coming to the end of its bloom period. You see some deadheads already arriving on it. And uh, this one azalea, which was a potted plant in a hospital, we'd taken it to somebody in the hospital, and when they came out, they planted here. We thought, well, those type aren't supposed to grow outdoors. But this one is now in its sixth year, and it seems to be still doing very well. Beautiful color and multicolored double flowers and multi shades. It uh, has elements that are nicer than other azaleas. This particular azalea, which is typical outdoor azalea, and not hybrid or anything. You see nice but somehow doesn't have all the character and depth of this other one in this little thicket little clump of trees we call the Sarov cluster after seeing Seraphima Sarov there's also another rhododendron it tends to have a fairly rich color because it's in the woods and reaching for the Sun getting higher and higher we put a little bench out here summertime to sit in this little thicket. And sometimes it's difficult to decide exactly where to make an outdoor video here because of the beauty. This clematis is uh, doing quite well this morning. I think this is Jack Manai, if I'm not mistaken. And my, this is the area. A bit leggy, but nice color here in this dark part. This rhodo is actually my favorite, it's called Sappho. I hope we can get nice color uh, by going up close. And coming back out slowly. Has this beautiful deep purple interior and uh, white on the outside. It's difficult to grow sapphos and get them to bloom well. This year we've got two bushes with uh, heavy blooms on them. Very, very beautiful plant. And the uh, clematis, of course, take a little bit of a close-up of it. Some of the others finished blooming. The very fragrant uh, Mexican plant. I forget the exact name of it now, but a few little white flowers left. And they had been extremely fragrant early on. The couple of Tibetan uh, sarko, something or the other, <laughs> that we have the bloom very early, but they're extremely fragrant as well. That long gone blooms on them. Now, one to remember the difference between a bloom and a blossom. Not to be too pedantic, but. Flowers have blooms unless they're going to produce fruit. They have blossoms if they're going to produce fruit. See, the apple blossoms aren't too heavy now. Fruit's already starting to form. We'll see if we get any figs this year on the fig trees. I'm sure George Petrikeyev's fig tree will bear this year. It's a little sad that George is gone now. 
I think Barlam has over here by his place some Tadgets blooming, marigolds, and uh, it's a beautiful time of year also. And I think, no thankful that I'm still alive, I hadn't expected to be, um, particularly earlier this year, but still here for the time being. Uh, I, reckon, I suppose that irritates some people, but I am still here. But uh, anyway, this is a gorgeous time of year. And I'll try to make up for broadcast that I wasn't physically able to do last week. I think I stretched out one on Panov and Itzkov and uh, Kurzweil sort of dragged it out. We went to a cemetery down by John Oliver High School where I actually did my grade 12 in Vancouver and uh, a couple of the little parks that I used to hang out in there made a little bit of a broadcast so we're going to use this road I think as a backdrop if I can keep away from the bees <laughs> 